Hello there folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, I want to talk about something that I know a lot about, lateral movement. We are, we did this wall several years ago. The homeowner called me and said, gee, Kirk, we got a hairline crack. I said, you're going to get more than a hairline crack, um, depending on that wall. And what we have here is a wall, 200 feet long, 12 feet tall. And what they have here is land up here. Now, We've got 100 tons of dirt pushing this wall this way. Now, here's something you folks don't often hear me say, but a buttress. A buttress is a wall that stabilizes a vertical wall. Now, a buttress can be done many ways. You do your foundation, and one side is flat and the other is at an angle. That, that proves so that when... The dirt or the earth, many, many tons push this way, it stabilizes it a bit more. Even with a buttress, can this craft? Absolutely. Even if they put tiers 10 feet down, 15 feet down, can it move? Absolutely. I'm looking right here at the base, and the base and the dirt has pulled away about 6 inches. I could stick my whole arm in there. Is it normal? Pretty much. It is normal. Uh, it's nothing to be concerned about, but up top here we have separation. I thought I'd point that out because this is what the video is all about and you folks who have retaining walls without buttresses uh, reinforcing it or if you didn't go 15 feet down with tears and even if you do go 15 feet down with tears I've seen walls crack like an egg still because humans cannot judge the rain. It rains for 30 days to three months that weight saturates the ground, swells it, and pushes. It adds an extra 20 tons pushing it this way. So we, all we can do is the best we can to engineer something that it won't crack, hairline, or move, but sometimes it fails. Jay's going to come up top here, and I'm going to show you what exactly I'm referring to. All right, guys, this will give you another a bird's eye view of what's going on here. You see, this is separated, and it's separated a quarter inch. A quarter inch looks pretty bad. And they, they even have rebar in here, and it was poured solid. That's about the best you guys can do when building a retaining wall that's 12 feet high, 200 feet long, and then the other direction is uh, 20 feet long. What's happening here is normal. 100 tons of dirt pushing it. It pushed it enough, and it's, this is the weak link to the entire wall. The rest of the wall, no cracks. The rest of this wall, no crack. But this is a joint. So without a buttress here, and even if you had a buttress, it could still happen. Here's how we repair it. Now, now granted, I'm using the same cement as we used the first time here. Uh, we take it, and, and when I say how we repair it, is this going to last forever? No, no way, it's not. What I told the homeowner is I said, you do know this is not Stucco's fault. It is the fault of movement. There's no such thing as stucco deteriorating a wall. It doesn't work like that. Stucco does not deteriorate any wall. Stucco is cement plaster. So it doesn't, it will not deteriorate a wall. It, it has nothing to do with um, the structural strength either. This is cosmetic, what we're doing. The, the finish we put on here before is simply cosmetic. So what we're doing here is I'm pushing it in this large crack. I opened it because I was curious. And when I opened it, I found this guy here. This is cinder block. The cinder, it pushed away just enough so the cinder block exploded. And when, you know, I've seen this about 20 times. Cinder block can explode with enough movement. This piece came from here. So what we do is we put it back together like so. And then we take a float and we just float it right in there. Uh, this float is dry, but I'm going to try to make it work even with a dry float because I want to do this in one take. All right, here's what we do. We float it to give it the same texture as I did a few years back. Now we're, we're floating this. And again, guys, common sense says this cannot be a permanent thing unless the ground has moved all it's going to move. And sometimes that does happen where... It's unstable, so the rain pushes it, and you got about three to four years before it becomes stable, meaning it's, it sank as much as it's going to sink. 
uh, depending on uh, if it doesn't rain for say 60 days then you got the same action occurring anyway this is called the float finish that we're doing on top of here basically what we're doing is blending this back into the original surface and that's all it takes but the, the main thing of this video is not to show how to patch it but to explain lateral movement uh, because I don't explain lateral movement too often because we don't encounter it too much we're doing stucco we're going vertical we don't have to do too much lateral that's for slabs foundations and things of that nature anyway uh, just a word about lateral movement uh, since I haven't covered it in this this fix here give me the perfect opportunity to and by the way guys I told the homeowner a couple years ago I said don't worry about it and he's got trees planted all the way down he says the, the tree will cover the crack eventually and I thought good attitude because you're never gonna permanently fix this at this stage so it's nothing to be too too concerned about just know what's happening anyway my name is Kirk Jason on the camera we thank you guys for watching and as usual we'll see you guys on the next one once again folks we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments if you guys like this video please click the like button down below and also if you enjoy what we do subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you my name is Kirk and Jay we thank you for watching, and from the entire Giordano family, we'll see you on the next one.